Hi, you're welcome to Johnson Praise TV once again. This is your digital classroom. Today, I am bringing you an exciting edition of Psych 223 Past Questions Review. So when we talk of Psych 223, it is all about biological psychology, as we've already done for other courses, which is information studies, um, academic writing, and then we also have um, the rest of the courses today too it is time for psychology students and i will entreat you to hit on the notification bell to give us a follow you have, if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel please make sure you subscribe and share it with your friends i want i want you to share the testimony with your friends together don't just go and tell them that i've been able to write but also let them also tell you that we have been able to write so please make sure you share it on your platform so your colleagues can also have access to it because it's not easy this course is very difficult and if you get some form of assistance you need to let your colleagues also benefit from it and one thing i also want you to know is that um this video i'm going to it's going to be centered on three sessions which is what Three, uh, three sessions, which is session one, session two, session three. It is all about 2020, 2023 past questions. And we are going to solve all the questions that is under under it. So we, f we will take you through the multiple choice, that is 40 multiple choice questions. And also we'll take you through the uh, 20 filling questions and then the compulsory question that you have to answer which is the theory aspect to will take you through break everything to you uh, break, break everything for you to understand it so please as you are here make sure you watch everything to an end and if i have enough time i'm going to record another video probably on one of the years that's why i did everything this one is not easy i have to spend a lot of time about five hours on this before coming up so it's not easy that's why i said if i have time because it takes a lot of time for me so please if let's if there's time i'll do that for you but uh before before we start the class i would like to appreciate you for your support and everything you've been doing for me i really appreciate that um a lot of times most most often some of you have been complaining about the video quality sometimes to a lot of things and i want to improve my videos this time around so um currently i'm setting up a studio and if you if you are in we in any way that you can support me do that uh being it um any of the equipment that is needed for a youtube studio setup you can really help in a form of um tripod stand in a form of camera laptop headphones studio chairs lightning or even if it is in a financial way you can support each and any way that you can support please you can get in touch with me or you contact me on 0545 and trust me i'm going to improve the videos and make sure i get you the quality videos and this also means i'm going to do videos for almost the courses you'll be writing each and every year but your motivation will determine whether i'll continue or not so please make sure you motivate us to continue to do more and and also after the end of the video i'll be dropping a link those of you who have been asking for the link sometimes you, you they, i post it on your group but i don't get access to it so i'll be dropping my my whatsapp channel link under the video so you can click and then you follow us on whatsapp so any video that we release we post the links there so i'll be sharing on your platforms again but i'll post it on my link then you can follow us and also um there's also an exciting opportunity for those who are brothers sisters family that want to travel um we have these special packages for you so you can get in touch with us and we'll make sure we get you the best services you are trusted you know there, there's a lot of trust issues in the system but we can assure you that everything is going to be done for you we have done it before and we continue to do it your your interest is our priority so being it canada mongolia usc sabia uh, poland singapore dubai and which other country so these are the countries we have office in and trust me um it, it ranges from um that is a offer offers with 
work opportunities that you are not going there you are now you are not going just to search for work but you are just going to work to work we give you every we work on everything for you you go and you start working there are some that also comes with so many packages you don't even need to go and rent a place to or stay it comes with accommodation packages and even transportation so all these packages are available if you are interested you get in touch with me and i'll I'll make sure I guide you through the process till everything is done. We have visa before payment option. We have payment before uh, visa option. We also have those that you pay in installment, which you'll be paying it in three installments. You deposit one in, in the mid begin before the process in the middle, and then the end after everything is done, you pay the remaining one. So that is the offer I have for you. And if you have a business you want to promote, please get in touch with me and. I'll make sure we, I and my team will come on board and support you in each every way, each and every way that we can support. Or even if it is a business idea you want to really implement and you're finding it difficult, you can get in touch and we give you business advice. We, we do market analysis, we do social media as display ads and so on and so forth. If it is about marketing or branding or anything about even even if about logos and stuff. You just get in touch with Top Strategy Digital and we'll help you. Finally, one thing I also want you to know is the reason why I want all of you to join my or to follow me on my channel. Um, I've also asked some of you and I'm also seeking for some kind of opportunities. I know a lot of you need work to do and so many stuff. So I don't want you to just watch my video, but I want to go to watch the video and also go home with an opportunity. If you make the A, you get money to pay your school fees and also settle your family. So if you have a job opportunity or you know any kind of job opportunities, you are in a company that is employing, you can get in touch with me. I'll make sure I post it on my channel so that those of you who have been following me, all of you, my audiences, I'll make sure that I post it there so you get whatever people you want to get. You get to the right people that can also do the work for you. So any other opportunities you have that you want to share, even with the University of Ghana student, whatever, get in touch with me and we'll see how best we roll it out. So that is all I have for you. Without really wasting my time, now i want us to start like i said if you have not subscribed please subscribe so your subscription will determine whether we continue with the videos or we don't continue and and that is how it's going to be and with the studio that i have already spoken about trust me we are going to improve on our, our, the way i will we work on the videos and everything for you so please any way that you can support just support us so now we don't really have much time on, the, on our side this video is going to take a lot of time from us so i want to just be quick so please uh, just pardon me if I'm, I'm going fast because it will take me a lot of time, even hours to redo this. So please, I'll be I'll be a bit faster, and and that is how it's going to be. So number one, it says that what part of um, neurons is responsible for receiving information, or what part of a, a neuron is responsible for receiving information? So like you know, this is 2022. 2020, 2022, 2023 past questions that we are solving. So the first question is that which part of what neuron is what responsible for receiving information? We have axon, we have terminal fiber, we have dendrite, we have what myelin sheath. So the answer is what dendrite. Why is it dendrite? Let's look at the the neurons and their functions. So under the neuron we have uh, dendrite, and the dendrite is a, a branch-like feature that that receives signal information from what from other neurons so it receives information the question says that which part of neuron is responsible is responsible for receiving information so the answer here is what then right so i hope you get if you get something like this you are not going to miss it so that is it number two if a neuron fails to activate then the following might be the cause if a neuron okay fails to activate then the following might be the reason so one there is not enough calcium in the nervous system b there is a membrane okay the membrane is not semi-permeable we have the signal might be weak and then the d the neuron is not an not in what an ascending neuron okay the neuron is not an ascending neuron so the answer here is what signal might be weak so if a neuron fails to, the reason being that if the neuron fails to, what, to activate, it could be due to what? A weak signal 
meaning that that could be an incoming what electrical or a chemical signal stimulating the neuron stimulating the neuron it's not strong enough to to reach a threshold needed for activation this this can occur due to various reasons such as insufficient neurotransmitter release uh, neurotransmitter release from what the um, presynaptic uh, neurons inadequate uh, depolarization of what post Post, uh, postsynaptic cord membrane or issues with the receptor sensitivity. So that is the the the, the reasons. Okay, and your answer is what weak signal. The signal might be weak. Let's move forward to question three. Like I said, we are going to solve about hundred questions uh, already. We are solving forty mult multiple choice questions. We are solving also twenty filling and then. The other one so when you add it already about 72 75 questions so that is what we are doing we are doing all the questions here we are solving all the 2022 20, 23 23 past questions so let's move to uh, number three animals with uh, lesions okay okay animals with lesions of um vitro media um hypothalamus okay and animals with lesions of what Vitromed, uh, vitromedia hypothalamus are uh, which which other which animals are what? animals with what lesions of what the vent ventromedia hypothalamus which are the, those animals so we have what um loose weight and will die unless force feed we have snow snow uh, so we have what show a smart increase in the body we also have have what eat almost anything now let's let's let me uh, explain this one. When you talk of, when you say uh, animals with what lesions of what uh, vitromedia hypothalamus, it means that let's look at it. So it means that those animals are what they 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 they, uh, they eat excessive. Okay, they eat excessive. So animals with what uh, lesions of what hypo uh, vitromedia hypothalamus is what animals that eat excessive. Okay, they do not recognize what safety they can eat everything that you give to them. They they they, they, are, they, they are not able to what to, to identify whether they are hungry or they are not hungry anytime they feel hungry and they eat everything. So the answer here is that they eat almost everything. Do you get it? So animals with what vetromedia hypothalamus are animals that do not feel hungry, uh, that do not feel satisfied, they always eat. Okay. They always eat so so they will eat everything because um, when you look at the explanation it says that they do not recognize safety as uh, uh, what um satiety right they do not recognize satiety right so they eat just like that let's look at question four let's look at question four question four says that um okay so we have what Dopamine is what is found in many parts of the brain and may be associated with which of the following disorders. So dopamine, okay, when we talk of dopamine, it is what? It says that it is found in many parts of the brain and may be associated with which of the following disorders. So which of them is actually associated with dopamine? We have addiction, we have sickle cell disease, we have blindness, we have tenors, uh, tenors sy syndrome. So the answer is what? It's addiction. Dopamine is related to addiction. Why is it related to addiction? So dopamine, that is what? DA, okay? Dopamine is what? It's a neurotransmitter that has been class uh, classically associated with what? The reinforcing effect of drugs and abuse and may have a key role in triggering the neurobiological uh, changes associated with addiction. So it is all the options provided. Um, dopamine is associated with what? With the first option, which is what? Addiction. So when you get this question, you go with addiction. Okay. So that is it. Let's look at number four. The connected series of uh, fluid filled cavities that are found throughout the brain are known as the A. We have um, 
sub um we have what we have the sub sabarach sabarach nod <laughs> spaces okay we have what the sabarach nod spaces we have the ventriclos we have the um the vexils and we have what the rito mirabil okay so the answer is what we have the ventricles the answer is the ventricles so why is the answer the ventricles okay so it is not the subarach node okay it, no the the, the uh, vesicles or the uh, mirable mirabi okay but it is rather the the ventricles the answer is the ventricles so that is the answer we so the ventricles when you read the slides it says that the ventricles are cover, uh, cavities or spaces in the brain that contain clear fluid known as what the cerebrospinal uh, fluid okay so cerebrospinal fluid is known as is is the initial for it is what c csf okay the fluid flows through the ventricles and around the brain and spinal cord acting as what a, a caution to prevent the brain hitting the cranium cranium okay so the brain the brain bone surrounding what the brain okay so the brain bone surrounding the brain so that is what the ventricle so the ventricle is what they are cavities right they are cavities or spaces that in the brain okay that contain clear fluid known as what the cerebrospinal fluid so that is a ventricle so if it is about what a question is saying a series of what fluid filled cavities then you should know that we are talking about ventricles please i hope you get it so with this one when it comes i'm expecting you to answer it yourself without really thinking twice let's look at number six in response to an action potential a perisynaptic neuron releases a chemical called dash which diffuses across the active and postsynaptic cell so which one is the answer so the answer here is what b which is what the neurotransmitter uh, synaptic gap and receptors so that is uh, the answer a is not the answer which is what the neuromodulator we have neuromodulator we have uh, synaptic gap we have motor and plate it is not the option we have for so all the options the only option that is associated with the synaptic neurons release with the synaptic neuron is what the neurotransmitter synaptic gap and then receptors please i hope you get it so let's look at it so let's look at it so the arrival of an impulse of synapse of the synapse okay so of the synapse triggers the release of neurotransmitters from the uh, presynaptic neurons into the uh, synapse okay so the chemical the chemicals bind with receptors and the postsynaptic membrane which is what receiving neuron okay so that is the answer so you could see that with this one we have um neurotransmitter here then there is neurotransmitter we have synaptic gap which is also uh synaptic also is also in there and then we are good to go so the answer is b which is neurotransmitter synaptic gap and then receptors so all of them so you look at the the correct answer and then you you are good to go All right, so let's look at the let's look at the the next one. Let's look at the next the next question. Let's look at the next question. So the next question, which is number seven, I am leaving that one to you as a try question. It says that ventricles are. So which one is the answer? Drop it under the comment section. Let me see. I explain to you what a ventricle is, right? so you should be able to tell me what the ventricles are so i'm not answering it so tell me whether it is fluid filled cavities in the brain and then the pulse in the new uh, 
the neural membrane that allows the waste product to escape or the gaps between the uh, mini, uh, mini, meninges, uh, okay, meninges, okay, and then the cranium. And also have the, the small sacs and then the small neurotransmitter in the endings of the uh, axon. So which of them is the answer? So you let us know with the answer. Um, number eight, the white... Um, the white matter of the brain is composed of dendrite, cell, mem uh, cell bodies, we have synapses, and then we have what? Uh, marinated axons. So the answer is what? Uh, marinated what? Axons. Okay. So what is it? So this, um, let's, let's look at it. The spinal cord is comprised of A. Uh, the spinal cord is comprised of... Um, gray matter located in the center of the spinal cord and is packed with cells by this dendrite white matter is also com uh, composed of what uh, melanated axons that carries information from the gray matter to the brain or the other areas of the spinal cord so that is the answer so it is what marinated axons marinated what marinated what Azons, my related azons. So, or uh, azons, right? How you pronounce it? You know, let's move forward. Number nine. What type of ion rushes into the neurons in the first millisecond or so of an of an action potential? What type of ion rushes into the neuron in the first millisecond or so of an action potential? So we have positively charged ion, we have negatively charged ions, we have thick ions, we have iodine. So which one is the answer? The answer here is positively charged ion. So during the first millisecond of an action potential, positively charged ions, particularly sodium ions, that is Na+, rushes into the neurons through voltage-gated sodium channels. This influx of positively charged ions leads to what depolarization of neurons memory potential initiating the action of uh, the action potential so that is the answer number 10 action potential is caused by a closing sodium channel b opening sodium channels d changes in membrane potential and then uh, c that is changes in memory potential and then the d is what changes in receptors so the answer is what changes in mem uh, membrane potential that is c changes in the memory membrane potential so if the stimulation is strong gate open long enough for the membrane to reach threshold this stimulation you know is known as an action potential right it is known as what an action an action potential so that is it too the answer here is what the uh, changes in what membrane potential let's look at number 11 neurotransmitters are either or dash so uh, it is b so neuro uh, neurotransmitters are either hesitatory or inhibitatory either they are what hesitatory or inhibitory so this is the answer not sensory or motor nor uh, presynapsis and pro, uh, and postsynapsis or they are rather the sensitive or dead but the, it is what hesitatory and inhibitory let's look at the next one the prefrontal cortex is known as is known to be fully developed by Number 12, the prefrontal cortex is known to be fully to be fully developed by so we have six years of age, 12 years of age, 18 years of age, and 25 years of age. So let's see why 25 years of age is the answer. So the the prefrontal the prefrontal cortex is known to undergo significant develop development throughout childhood, adolescence, and into an early adulthood studies in neuroscience have shown that the prefrontal cortex continues to mature 
and refine its connection well into person's mind 20s okay person's mind in 20s okay the, this ongoing development is associated with the improvement in executive function such as impulse control planning decision making and working memory therefore the prefrontal cortex is considered to be fully developed around the age of 25 so that is it so in the 20s already so you know so when you, you meet something like this the prefrontal cortex is known to uh, uh, um, is, is fully developed within the 25 okay the 25 years and I bet right let's look at question 13 which structure of the brain is the uh, pituitary gland attached which part which structure of the brain is the pituitary gland attached so we have for the hypothalamus we have locus uh, uh, chloros right locus chloros and we have also have what the raffi nuclei and then we have hippocampus okay so the answer is what hippo uh, hypothalamus hypothalamus so the hypothalamus so the structure of the brain in which the pituitary gland is attached to is the hypothalamus so please pay attention the structure in the brain in which the pituitary gland is attached is hypothalamus so this is what so we have hypothalamus here so it is associated with hunger test body temperature pressure it regulate it also regulates what pituitary gl glands or hormones processing do you get it? So it is what? Hypothalamus. Let's move forward. Question 14. The temporary regions of the brain is associated with which of the following behaviors? So it is associated with what? Talking and listening. So when you talk of temporary region of the brain, it is associated with what? It is associated with talking and listening, not planning and running, not seeing and dreaming, not feeling and touching, but it is what? It is what if you believe it is the answer is true say yeah drop yeah under the comment section so it is what talking and listening list talking and listening so the temporary region of the brain is a specific area located on the sides of the the, the head just above the ears it encompasses parts of the temporary loop one of the four major loops of the uh, cerebral cortex the temporary loop plays a crucial role in the various functions including all the three processing which is hearing language comprehension memory formation and emotion regulation it contains specialized regions responsible for tasks such as um, recognizing faces understanding language and storing long-term memory memories so the temporal region of the brain is primarily associated with all the three processing and language comprehension it includes the auditory cortex which which is involved in processing sound formation as well as areas responsible for language comprehension and interpretation therefore the behavior such as talking and listening are closely linked to the function of temporary region so when they ask you the temporary region of the brain is associated to which of the behavior then you should know that it is we are talking about talking and listening you talk a listen you talk a listen right it is simple to identify even without learning talking and listening right so don't choose any other thing but you should be talking and listening let's look at 15 all sensory information pass through the thalamus with the exception of a uh, geniculate nucleus we have a factory bulb we have lateral geniculate nucleus and we have none of the above so it is a, a factory bulb or factory bulb so um let's look at it the thalamus is a small sub sub cortical structures associated in the center of the brain it receives sensory information relay in sensory information Okay, okay, so I'm taking out. It receives sensory information, relays the sensory for information, higher brain regions, which is the cortex. And then it is therefore called relay station. So it is all about the hypothalamus. And therefore, 
there are signal there are signals about vision hearing um touch temperature except what smell so smell is associated with what or factually or factually those who did information studies you know the daily inform uh, encounter with information orally or factually we have also um um, um that is what the sense of smell and other ones okay so they are what i think five senses so it is what or factually is, is what the reception of smell right so that is that is it let's look at okay so i have the so i have this one here the retina project uh the reg, the retina the retina project to subcortinal regions in the brain then that's lateral ganaculate nucleus and in the thalamus is major target of the uh, retinal region cells so the lateral uh, ganaculate nucleus that is the major um, subcortical enter relaying and also um, visual information to the primary visual cortex okay and 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 so on so when you take the question again so all the following all, all sensory information pass through the thalamus with the exception of what it is of factory so factory I'm assisting phenologists phenologists try to find about the personality by what so the phenologists when you talk of phenologists um um they are people who are also who try to what to find out personalities of others by the use of what uh, by by the use of person's school okay school the person's school okay so it says that the phrenologists try to find about personality by what reading person's um horoscope it is false we a feeling feeling a person's school it is true looking at a person's hands is not true that is what promise and then we also have what asking people question is not also true so it is what it is feelings a person's school so a phrenologist felt the the school okay he would use his knowledge of the shapes of head an organ's position to determine the overall natural strength and weakness of an individual. So when they touch your school, they should be able to what, tell you some of your characteristics. They are called what, the phenomenologists. And we also have seven, uh, number 17, the treatment of depression, anti this present, okay, anti this present target, which of the following um neurotransmitters in the nervous system please i'm taking it again eh? this word is confusing me in the treatment of depression antidis present target which of the following so when you talk of the uh anti the anti this pre, uh, present they they target one of the following okay of the neurotransmitters in the nervous system which of them do they target okay so i'm looking at what the antidis uh, antidis presents what they target in the nu uh, the neurotransmitters or in the nerv nervous system. So we have what pep peptides is not true. We are not doing science here. We have what uh, glu glucagon. It is not true. We have what uh, serotonin. It is what true. And then insulin. It's no it's not true. So it is what serotonin. Serotonin. So. Um, let's look at the anti this present increase the level of serotonin at the synapse at the synapse okay anti this present increase the level of what zero uh, serotonin serotonin right so that is the answer I need not to read further again let's go let's move forward number 18 the part of brain that has been showing is associated with language is okay the part of the brain that has been showing to be associated with language is what it is uh, a we have 
right side of the brain, we have left side of the brain, C, we have a uh, medical temporal region, and we have what? The pastoral region. It is what? The left side of the brain. So this is where the the bocus area and other, um, um, how do you call it? Other um, parts are also located. So the bocus area located in the left hemisphere is associated with speech production and articulation. Our ability to articulate ideas as well as the use of words. The broader regions associated with language processing includes um, so includes not a uh, broker brokers area, but it is also other areas such as what the Wenex, the Wenex area, which which is what involved in language comprehension as well as as well as what various connections between different parts of the brain involved in language production and comprehension. So the answer is what the left side. Okay. So if it is confusing you, okay. You know that the left side, B are the left side, okay? So the left side, not the right side, but it's the left side. Let's move forward. Number, 19, number 20, 19, right? The, um, the acetic chlorine. The acetic chlorine is associated with mem memory. Which of the following is likely to, to be caused by acetic chlorine depletion? So acetyl acetyl chlorine, eh? Which one is it really associated with, or the, with the cause of what acetyl chlorine depletion? So we have what, a a Hamel's disease, Axhamel Axhamel's disease, okay? And we have what, the Parkinson's disease, and we have the para, uh, paral paralysis, and we also have what physical disability. Psychology, your times are not easy. Mm. So the answer here is what? Um, as Hermes, what disease? As Hermes disease. So when it has to do with what? Acetylchlorine, it is associated with what? As Hermes disease. As Hermes disease. So let's move on. So as Hermes disease is a, a progressive Neuro, uh, neurological disorder that primarily affect the memory, thinking skills, and behavior. Acetylchlorine is a neurotransmitter that plays a crucial role in various cognitive functions, including memory and learning. In an hem in a, um, as Hermel's disease, where a significant decrease decrease in levels of acetylchlorine in the brain due to the loss of um, Chlorine, chlorine, chlorinergic what neurons? Chlorinergic what? Chlorinergic what neurons? Which which are responsible for producing acetylchlorine? The depletion of acetylchlorine is closely re, uh, associated with what the cognitive decline of memory impairment. Memory impairment characteristics of what? Um, as Hermann's disease. So. Um, so when we talk of therefore the Alzheimer's disease is often linked with to what to the acetylchlorine the depletion. So the answer is what acetylchlorine depletion. Twenty the synap the synaptic pruning refers to what which is what reduction and removal of neurons for efficiency. The answer is what reduction or removal of neurons for deficiency or for deficiency. It is not growth of neurons in what the nervous system neither is it also the growth in a neural connection during development or movement of neurons in uh, gala cells during development but it's what reduction or removal of neurons of forward efficiency so let's look at this the synaptic pruning refers to the process by which all necessary which are necessarily or weaker synaptic connections between neurons are um, eliminated or reduced to increase the efficiency of the neural uh, the neural trans transmission during the development. The brain produces more neurons and synapses and synapses than it needs. As the brain matures, synaptic pruning occurs to refine the strength and connection that are almost important for neural uh, neural 
communication and what function while eliminating those that are less important or unused. This process helps to, to sculpt the neural circuit and organize brain function. So let's look at 21. So, so the 21, nicotine is stimulated, uh, stimulating drug and it is therefore associated with which of the following? So nicotine, it is what? Stimulating drug and it is therefore associated with each of the following. We have what? Acetyl chlorine, we have GABA, we have, uh, GABA, we have, we have what? Uh, dopamine and then also the last one is what? Resin. Resin. So the answer is what? Acetyl chlorine. So the nicotine, which comes from a cigarette, stimulant, uh, okay, stimulates one type of what? Acetyl chlorine receptor known as what? Uh, uh, nico nicotinic what receptor nicotinic receptor so when you talk of what uh, um, nicotine okay it is associated with what as uh, as uh, acetyl chlorine okay acetyl chlorine right acetyl chlorine that is the answer so nicotine acetyl chlorine so when you talk of the nicotine it comes from cigarette cigarette comes from a cigarette and it is associated with what acetylchlorine receptor known as what the nicotinic receptor okay so the nicotinic uh, nico, nicotinic receptors are found in the central nervous system let's look at number 22 if both parents are recessive for sickle cell which which are the which are the chances of them producing a child with this disorder. So we have 25%, we have 50%, 70%, and then we have 100%. So let's look at it. If the parents are sickle cell, or if the parents are recessive for sickle cell, then what are the chances of producing a child with this disorder? So the chances have been given 25, 50, 75, and 100. So when both parents are, are carriers of the recessive Early for sickle cell disease, meaning they are, they 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 each carry um, one copy of the gene. There are four possible combination of alleles their children can inherit. So the first one, a child inherits what a normal alley from the from both parents, which is twenty five percent. A child inherits what a normal alley from what from one parent and and sickle array from what the other parent which is also 25 percent and also the third one is what the child also inherits what a sickle cell array from one parent and a normal array from the other parent which is 25 percent and then the child inherits what the sickle cell arrays what allergies okay sorry allergies from what uh, both parents which is what 25 percent chance so out of the possibility in in the fourth scenario does not have what sickle cell. So out of the possibilities, out of this possibility, only in the fourth scenario does the child have what sickle cell disease. Therefore, the chance of producing a child with disorder is 25%. So it depends on what. So if they are all carrying what allergy, the, uh, then there's what uh, a possibility for for their child having what 20% disorder. Okay, when the, 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 the recessive order, they are all carrying it, it's 25% for them carrying what, the uh, recessive allergy disorder. Let's look at number 23, fovea. Fovea is the part of retina that, that contains photo, that contains what? Photoreceptors, photoreceptors called so fovea is the part of the retina that contains photoreceptors called we have cones we have rods we have what ganglion cells and we have what uh, a marine cell so the answer is called cone so it is cone so when it's our fovea fovea is linked with what cone so fovea is the part of what the retina that contains the photo photoreceptors okay photoreceptors called cones okay so day and light visions uh, a day, daytime and and color vision cone is associated with daytime and color vision excellent visual 
um, acuity and uh, that is what sharp clean images and also uh, concentrated in the fovea so it is concentrated in the fovea and also not useful at night can't actually disc uh, disc uh, discriminate colors and also um, it is also outnumbered by rods so that is it um, the brokers the brokers aphasia is the inability to produce speech which brain is affected so when it's the broker aphasia is the inability to produce speech so we know yes so which of the which brain which which brain area is really affected okay in case there's what there's a, a broker broker's what aphasia which of them is really affected we have what the occipita region we have for the spatial area of the brain we have for the parental region and one for the temporal uh, cortex so it is what the temporal cortex the temporal cortex the temporal cortex so that is it um let's look at 25 an individual had a stroke that has caused damage to the left hemisphere which is likely which is likely behavior uh, what is what is the likely behavior effect so an individual had a stroke that is caused that has caused damage to the left hemisphere what is the likely behavior effect so we have a he is unlikely to walk but will be able to talk b he is unlike he is likely to be paralyzed on the right side of the body and unable to talk and see we have nothing will change for him and also D he's likely to work but strong possibility he will lose the ability to talk so the answer is B which is what is likely to be paralyzed on the right side of the body and unable to what to walk so if an, an individual heart true that is caused by damage in the left hemis uh, hemisphere then the one that is going to what what is likely to uh, what is the likely behavior he is likely to be paralyzed on the right side okay of the body and unable to what to talk let's look at uh, so when the damage called occurs to the left hemisphere of the brain it af uh, it often affects the right side of the body due to the way neural pathways are organized in the brain that is the central lateral control Additionally, because the left hemisphere is typically dominant for language processing in most individuals, damage to the area can result in language uh, deficit, such as what difficulty speaking, understanding language, and or both. So that is the answer. Number 26. The structure that allows communication between between the two cerebral hemispheres is called we have a, a corpus callosum corpus callosum so the structure that allows communication between two cerebral hemispheres is called corpus cal uh, uh, what callosum callosum okay callosum so it's what corpus callosum so it is not reticular formation neither is it what a uh, singulate ketus or singulate a uh, singulus what singulate cortex right so they are all the same here. The D and then the B are all the same. It is rather the the corpus callosum, right? So the corpus callosum is a thick bundle of nerve fibers that connect the left and the right um, cerebral hemisphere of the brain. It facilitates communication between the two hemispheres, allowing them to share information and coordinate function. Without the corpus callosum, the two hemispheres will not be able to work together effectively. It is therefore the structure responsible for enabling communication between the two cerebral hemispheres. So that is the answer. Number 27. Why is contrast used in ICT scan? Why is contrast used in ICT uh, scan? We have what? It, it is suppress the, a particular tissue we have it enhanced particular tissue it ensure correct tissue uh, is being what image and also we have to reduce bone uh, interference so the answer is what it enhanced particular tissue 
it enhances a particular what, tissue. Let's look at it. In medical imaging, contrast refers to the use of what uh, substances known as contrast agent or contrast media to enhance the visibility of certain structures or abnormalities within the body during okay or abnorm, ab, abnormalities within the body during imaging procedures such as ICT scans, MRI scans or NL X-ray scans. So, so contrast contrast agent typically iodine based or bar, uh, barium based are uh, administered orally and or what intravenous interven intravenously to highlight specific organs, blood vessels or abnormal or abnormalities, enhan enhancing their visibility and improving the diagnostic quality of the image. Let's look at number twenty-eight. Tina is twenty-eight years old and have delusions and sometimes hear voices her medication is regulating what type of neurotransmitter tina is 28 years old and have delusions and sometimes hear voices her medication is regulating what type of neurotransmitter we have what uh acetylchlorine we have what dopamine we have what uh, sero uh serotonin serotonin and then we also have what neuro neurofin uh, neurofifrin okay okay so we have what neurofinephrine uh, phenephrine okay right neuro neurofinephrine so the the answer is what dopamine so thinner symptoms of delusion and auditory hallucination along with with the mentions of medications medication regulations suggest a what a condition related to what psychosis such as what a schizophrenia what schizophrenia such as what schizophrenia the medical used to regulate these symptoms typically target dopamine receptors in the brain okay so today we are seeing where so hmm, don't worry we'll, we'll finish on um, uh, 29 autism uh, spectrum disorders are characterized by a difficulty with both language and communication b inability to understand rules of grammar c inability to produce speech and then d difficulty learning more than one language so the answer is what difficulty with both language and communication so aut autism uh, spectrum disorder is characterized by a difficulty with learn with what both difficulty with both language and communication so autism is associated with what communication how a person is able to express him or herself or really talk so the person have what person with autism only mostly have what it challenges with what with language and communication so autism uh, spectrum disorder which is what asd is ion plus uh, neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by what abnormalities in social behavior, language and communication skills, and unusual behaviors and interests. So, autism is characterized by which is I've, I've shown you the the whole thing abnormalities of social development. So it affects the uh, oh, there's always what abnormalities of social development and also communication and restriction of behavior and interest. So. Autism is a severe form of broader group of what disorders. These are referred to as what autism spectrum disorder. Autism spectrum disorders. Number thirty. Which of the following neurotransmitters do you think is a, do you think his body is producing but abnormal amount? Which of the following neurotransmitters do you think his body is producing? But in abnormal amount, we have what a uh, a uh, 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 epinephrine and what dopamine, epinephrine and dopamine. We have what peptides and dopamine. We have GABA and what uh, nicotine, and we have what uh, cortisol and GABA, cortisol and GABA. So the answer is what uh, epinephrine and what dopamine. So. Um, Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that plays a big role in how we receive things 
in in our mood when there's too much or too little dopamine in the brain it can lead to symptoms like delusions and hallucinations which are common in conditions like what uh schizophrenia right so it is what dopamine uh, uh what epinephrine uh, epinephrine and what epinephrine and dopamine epinephrine and what dopamine that is the answer let's look at number 29 and uh, number 31 if an individual is, if an individual is receiving treatment for an alignment and medication for an alignment and the medication is supposed to be re, uh, regulate uh, serotonin or dopamine or dopamine right which of the following disorders is he likely suffering okay let me take it again right if an individual is receiving treatment for alignment and medication is supposed to regulate what serotonin or dopamine which of the following disorder is he likely is he likely suffering right so if an individual is receiving a treatment that is in alignment with what uh, uh, medication is supposed to regulate what the sero, uh, serotonin or dopamine which of them so we have for depression or down syndrome we have for adhd or autism spectrum disorder we have for uh, schizophrenia or uh, depression and also we have for uh, schizophrenia or personality disorder so so both um schizophrenia and depression are disorders that are that are involved what that involve abnormalities in neurotransmitter function so the answer is what schizophrenia and de uh, depression schizophrenia and depression which is what d a uh, c the answer here is c so including what serotonin and dopamine therefore medication targeting this Neurotransmitters are often used to manage symptoms associated with these conditions. Number 32. If the, the left hemisphere is removed in child, recovery of language function is dash. That is where, um, whereas in adult, it would be what? So, um, I didn't really bring the whole thing. That's why the question is disorganized. So, in the left hemisphere, if the left hemisphere is removed with children, the language uh, uh, the recovery of language function is right. Which one is that? And then, whereas in adults, it will be what? So, it is also uh, the the brain can adopt more readily. So, the loss of left uh, hemisphere will lead to what impaired language impaired what language and then but the potential recovery but with potential recovery for over time in adult the impairment would be severe and recovery limited will be what will be severe in adult the the impairment will be what will be severe and recovery limited because the brain's inability to adapt is reduced as compared to what children so um the brain will adapt with okay so so the answer here will be um let me see the chart in children it will be what the impaired language i i, I forgot that it really underline so in children the brain adopt more readily so the loss of the loss in the left will be what will lead to impaired language okay so impaired language and then okay so we have impaired language and in, in adult it will be okay So, so I think it is rather, uh, um, which is what, this is fast and faster, slow and fast. Um, okay.
Okay, so so the answer here will be what? Will be A. Yes, the answer will be A. Um, so it will be what? Impaired and relatively what? Normal. So let's look at number 33. Which of the following infections or disease are likely caused by a uh, neuro psycho uh, psychological defect which is what the answer is what uh, ma, uh, what Men, uh, mening meningitis right the answer is meningitis so malaria and kidney failure can indeed um, have neurological uh, complications but they are not typically what associated with neuro uh, neuro psychological defect uh, to to the same extent as what meningitis. Meningitis is directly meningitis that directly what affect the pro, uh, pro, protective membrane covering the brain and the spinal cord, leading to inflammation and potential damage of the brain, resulting to neurophysical or neuro neuropsychological defects. So the answer is what meningi meningitis. So when they ask you which of the following infections or diseases are likely caused by neuropsychological defect it is what meningitis so 34 uh, multiple uh, silo, uh, silo, silosis okay is caused by the breakdown of a of a specific element of neurons which which of the following is correct so it is what myelin around axons so the answer is what myelin myelin around what axons or axons so the multiple what uh, the multiple sclerosis okay the multiple sclerosis caused by the breakdown of uh, of a specific element of neuro uh, neurons which is which of the following is correct it is what myelin around what axons so multiple sclerosis which is ms is caused by the breakdown of uh, myelin uh, sheath okay which is a protective covering around axons, the long fiber of uh, neurons. So 35, language production is impaired after damage to what? Language, language production is impaired after damage to, so if your, bro your broker's area is damaged, then you'll be what? Language impaired. So broker's area located in the frontal lobe of the brain is primarily responsible for the production of speech and language processing. Uh, damage to the to this area can result in bro broker's aphasia, characterized by difficulty in forming words and sentences, while comprehension of language remains relatively intact. Number thirty six. Which of the following is not uh, anti-anxiety agent? So we have alcohol, we have GABA, we have uh, acetylchlorine and we have what uh, barbiturate barbiturate okay so the answer is what acetylchlorine so GABA which is what gamma aminobutyric uh, <laughs> GABA what aminobutyric okay GABA aminobutyric acid which is what gamma aminobutyric acid which is GABA and and what and barbiturates are known to have what anti-anxiety effect alcohol can also have a calming effect but it is not physically prescribed as a medical treatment for anxiety however uh, acetylchlorine is not primarily associated with what anxiety regulation it has different function so GABA is number 37 GABA is an inhalatory neurotransmitter and therefore is likely to which is what a increase the level of activity in the individual b cause joy when it is combined with alcohol c we have what decrease alertness in an individual and then with the d is what severe psychiatric uh, psychiatric disorder such as what schizophrenia so the answer is what decrease alertness in an individual so gaba is an inhibitory inhibitory neurotransmitter and therefore is likely to what decrease alertness in an individual so GABA which is what uh, gamma aminobutyric butyric what aminobutyric gamma aminobutyric acid is is an inhibitory is what is an what an inhibitory neurotransmitter which means 
it it is it has what a calming effect in the brain when GABA binds each receptor so that is it number 38 um if the behavioral effect of um benzo benzodiazepines benzodiazepine is reduced is reduced anxiety one one can conclude that they are agonists for I'm taking it again if behavioral effect of what uh, benzodiazepines is reduced anxiety one can conclude that the uh, agonists for a we have gaba we have uh, dopamine we have acetyl uh, acetylchlorine and we have what rensin so so um so so the answer is what gaba right so when you talk of the ben benzo they are ziffins. Benzodiazepines are, are also known as are what a class of medication commonly used to treat anxiety in in so in so insomnia and what and certain and certain other conditions. Okay, so GABA is what an inhibitory neurotransmitter, meaning it has a calming effect in the nervous system. When GABA binds it bind to its re receptor receptors on on neuro neurons it reduces what the activities of those neurons leading to decrease um excitability and sense of realization so the answer is gaba number 39 uh parkinson's what parkinson's disease is caused by the integration of fat structure in the brain Parki uh, also Parkinson's, okay. Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is caused by the the uh, degeneration of what of um. Sorry, I'm tired, <laughs> but I will continue. Don't worry. So, um, Parkinson's disease is caused by degeneration of fat structure in the brain. So it is what caused by the substantia nigra. Okay, the answer is substantia nigra. Let's look at number 40. Uh, the damage to uh, one next area is characterized by the ability to A. We have what? We have um, um, produce what speech, um, use correct grammar, and also comprehend language. So the answer is what? Comprehend language. Comprehend language. So that is the correct the answer. Let's look at number the, the session B. So the session B, they ask you, it's a feeling question. So they ask you that you answer. Let's look at it. What is a neurotransmitter? So I, I read and then we move forward. So neurotransmitters, so if you have pen or what, you can just be writing them down. So neurotransmitters are, chemi are chemicals produced by neurons that transmit signal across synapses. These neurotransmitters can, can be either as it tab uh, is that as it uh, what as it is it tertiary okay is it as it tertiary or inhibitory okay so that is the definition for what neurotransmitters so neurotransmitters are chemicals produced by neurons that transmit signals across what the synapses right that is the answer or you can design define it as what it is what it's a neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter is a chemical substance produced by neurons that is used to transmit signals across synapses, which are what, uh, which are the uh, junctions between neurons or between between uh, neurons or between neurons and other cells, such as what muscles and gland cells. So number two, which is the feeling, we are doing the feeling. Number two, select one neurotransmitter and describe its effect in the nervous system so this is how it's going to be so we are selecting one um we are selecting one neurotransmitter and then we look at how so we have so many of them we have what we have um epinephrine we have what Sero, uh, serotonin we have for dop dopamine we have so on and so forth so let's let's so so i'm using dop dopamine okay dopamine right dopamine so dopamine is a neurotransmitter that plays a key role 
in in several functions within the nervous system. The effects are so we have what defined the dopamine. Okay, the dopamine as I've defined it. So let's look at the effect. We have what re reward and pleasure. Okay, so dopamine is often referred to as feel good neurotransmitter because it involves in the brain's reward system. When something rewarding or pleasuring happens, such as eating delicious food or receiving praise, dopamine is re re released, leading to feeling, feeling of what pleasure and reinforcement of the behavior. So, uh, one of the functions or of what dop dopamine or one of the function of what dopamine bind is what is what reward and pr pleasure. Please, I hope this one you get it. Let's look at the second one. Um, movement and motor control so dopamine is also involved in regulating movement and motor control it is produced um it, it is produced in the substantia nigra a region of the brain involved in the coordination of movement decreased dopamine levels in the areas are associated with the movement disorder such as what parkinson's disease characterized by uh, tr uh, tremors, rigidity, and brad uh, bradyk uh, bradykinesia, right? Which is what slowness, slowness of what movement. And then the next one is what attention and movement. So do dopamine is uh, implicated in attention and movement. So one of the function is that it is what uh, it is implicated in attention and movement. Optical dopamine levels are important for maintaining focus and movement to pursue goals okay so that is it so it it it, it works what um it implicate uh it implicate in attention and movement and then the last one is what mood regulation so dopamine also uh, regulate our mood right so you can just stay the point and then you move forward so dopamine dopamine also plays a role in mood regulation. Imbalances in dopamine levels have been associated with mood disorders such as depression and bipolar disorder. So, so drugs that affect dopamine levels such as certain uh, antidepressants and anti uh, psychotic anti, and antipsychotic are used in treatment of these conditions. So let's look at number three and the feeling. What is executive function? What is executive function? So, um, when you talk of executive function, executive function encompasses a set of cognitive functions that are primarily medi uh, mediated by prefrontal co uh, cortex, including abstract thinking and planning, working memory and regulation of impulse behavior, and control of what? Uh, complex behavior. So, that is it. So, we are what? Executive function. So, executive function is what? It's encompasses of set of what? Cognitive functions that are primarily what? Meditated by prefrontal cortex, including abstract thinking and planning. We have memory, uh, working memory, working memory, memory and regulation of what? Impulse behavior. And then the last one is what? Uh, control. Um, of complex behavior. So when you talk of ab abstract thinking and planning, it is what the prefrontal cortex is responsible for a higher order cognitive processes such as abstract thinking, which involves conceptualizing ideas beyond concrete ob uh, ob object and what situations, and also have what working memory. So the prefrontal the prefrontal cortex plays crucial role in the working memory which is what ability to temporarily hold and manipulate information in the mind to guide the behavior and solve problems and regulation of impulse behavior so this is also what it helps to regulate in, uh, impulse uh, impulsive what behaviors by uh, inhabiting inappropriate responses and controlling impulses so the Ability to inhabit automatic and prepotent responses is essential for self-control and resting temptation or distraction. And then the last one I'm talking about is what?
control of complex behavior. So it also enables the control of more complex behavior by integrating information from various brain regions, coordinating responses to achieve a specific goal. And then let's look at number four. What is the role of a thalamus in the transfer of sensory information to the cortex? What is what? The role of thalamus to the transfer of sensory information to the cortex. So let's look at it. So um, when you talk of thalamus, thalamus is a, a small subcortical structure located in the center of the brain. It receives sensory information, really the sensory information um, higher brain uh, higher brain re uh, regions, which is the cortex, and it therefore it is therefore called relay station. So the thalamus acts as what? So the answer I'm I'm answering here. The, the question says that what? What is the role of the thalamus in the transfer of sensory information to the cortex? So the thalamus acts as a relay station for the sensory information receiving input from various sensory pathways and relay them to higher brain regions particularly the cortex okay it integrates the process of sensory signals before directing them to the in a, uh, appro in appropriate sensory receiving areas in the cortex additionally it transmits replies or feedback signal from the cortex to other brain regions number five so this is what the primary function of a uh, parasynaptic what nervous system what is the, what, the primary function of what the parasynaptic nervous system so it is one the answer is what to regulate non-emergency response by the organ by the what by the organ so that's the answer the primary function of the para parasynaptic nervous system is to what to regulate non-emergency response by the organs so it is responsible for decreasing functions that that were increased by the synaptic nervous system thereby returning organs to pre-stress level so that is the answer let's look at number six what is the primary function of the the parietal lobe what is the primary function of the parietal lobe so the answer is it processing and integrating information about touch sensation, muscle stretch receptors, joint receptors, eye, head, and body what position. So that is the primary function of what the parietal what loop. The parietal loop uh, is what for processing and what integrating information about the touch sensation, muscle stretch receptors, joint receptors, eye, head, and body positions. Number seven. This select one one mood or technique used to examine or study the brain and describe one advantage of that technique. So we want to we have to select them. We have the techniques include what we have the um the le, the lazy the lessons what the lessons method. We have what computerized axia tomography. Uh, we also that is cut. We have what magnetic magnetic uh, resonance imaging we have a uh, position emission tomography which is pet we have what um electro uh, electro cephalography uh, what we have what the electro electro encephalography what okay electro encephalography and we also have what the neuropsychological assistance so i'm going to choose only one so um I'm going to choose the magnetic resonance imaging imaging that is MRI. So the advantages of magnetic imaging uh, a magnetic resonance imaging uh, it's what high resolution the, uh, one of the function is high resolution. So MRI provide detailed images of the brain structure and anatomy with excellent spatial resolution. So it allows to precise localization of the brain lesions and what abnormalities aiding in diagnosis and treatment planning for uh, for various uh, neurological conditions right so that is it and and there are some of also these are some of the advantages uh, uh, two it does not require s re or radioactive material three safe the safe 
painless or non evasive and then the three it is what it results in high resolution so the high resolution is what i spoke about so you can choose that save pain painless and non evasive number eight what is the rule of corpus colossum okay what is the rule, rule of what corpus colossum in the brain okay what is the rule of corpus colossum okay so the answer is what the corpus colossum facilitates communication between the left and right cerebral hemisphere of the brain, allowing the integration of information and coordination of functions between the two sides of the brain. So number nine is a try question. What is referred to as threshold of hesitation in the action of a uh, potential? Okay, what is referred to as the threshold of hesitation? hesitation in the potential in an action potential so i have them here threshold in the point at which uh, neurons have has received sufficient stimulation to trigger an impulse threshold fixed for neurons but may vary from neurons okay they are initiated they are initiated in an all or non manner which the excitation, the hesitation of what? Of the neuron reaches or exceeds threshold. So that is it. So please drop the answer. The number nine. I've read the option for you. Which which one is the answer number nine? Which of them is re refers to as what? Threshold of what? Hesitation in an action potential. In an action potential. What is it? Now let's look at number twenty. What causes the uh, the parking the Parkinson's what the Parkinson's disease? Okay, what causes the Parkinson's disease? So the answer is what the substantia nigra. That's the answer. The substantia nigra causes what uh, Parkinson's what disease. Let's look at number eleven. What does the Principle of all or none refers to the neural refers to in the neural transmission. What does the principle of all or none refer to in the neural transmission? The answer is the answer is what the action potential. The action potential. I've already re read something about it for you. Number twelve. What is referred to as what the hesitatory uh, post post uh, postsynaptic uh, potential. That is EPSP. What is it? So the answer is what? Hesitatory uh, postsynaptic potential is graded, is, is, is regarded as what? Potential that occurs in the postsynaptic neuron. neuron in I'm taking it again. So the, the EPSP is regarded as what? The potential that occurs in the postsynaptic neuron in response to the release of what? The hesitatory neurotransmitters. Uh, from what the presynaptic neurons so that is the answer that is the answer number 13 so when they ask you that what is referred to what the hesitatory uh postsynaptic potential you say that it is regarded as what the potential that occur in what the postsynaptic neuron in response to the release of what hesitatory uh, neurotransmitters from the presynaptic neuron so let's look at number 13 explain the phenomenon known as what the cortical blindness in vision the cortical blindness in vision what is the cortical blindness in vision the cortical blindness in vision is the uh, is the inability to see despite intact eyes caused by what damage to the area uh, visual imp uh, impairment that is vi of the visual cortex so when you talk of when you talk of the uh, cortical blindness in vision it is what it is the inability to see despite intact eyes okay the inability to see despite intact eyes number 14 what is what is the association between dopamine and schizophrenia Schizophrenia. What is the the 
the association or what is the relationship between them. So the Chisrophenia, the ch uh, in Chisrophenia, there is what? Uh, there, there is hypothesis suggesting that abnormal levels or in a, it, or activity of uh, dopamine in the brain may be involved. This theory is supported by observation that ob observation that drug that affect dopamine levels can influence symptoms of what schizophrenia. Additionally, neuroimaging studies have what, shown the differences in do dopamine receptors and levels in the brain of individuals with what schizophrenia compared to those without the disorder. While dopamine isn't the sole cause of schizophrenia, the role of what the, the, its role in the brain functioning is believed to be significant in the development of the progression of disorder. Number fifteen, he says what describe the primary key, the primary or key function of the uh, parietal cortex. Okay, the parietal cortex. So what is the key function of the parietal cortex? So the answer is what. One of the primary functions of the parietal cortex is the is to what to process and integrate sensory information from various modalities, including what touch, um, pre uh, pre uh, preproception, okay, preproception of that is what sensation of the body and and vision to what to create coherent representation of space and body's position within it. So when we talk of what the function of the uh, the parietal cortex, the primary function of the parietal cortex is to process and, and integrate sensory information from various modalities. Okay, so you are good to go. Number, number um, 16, describe one cause of attention deficit in hyper, hyperactiv hyperactivity disorder, which is what? Uh, attention deficit in hyperactivity disorder so one of uh, one cause of the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder that is what ADHD is believed to be what to be genetic factor research suggests that the genetic dis uh, predispositions um, play a significant role in the development of the um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder as individual with fam uh, with a family history of the disorder are more likely to develop it themselves okay specific genes related to the neurotransmitter pathway brain development and dopamine regulation have been uh, implemented in the ADHD okay additionally environmental factors such as um, prenatal closure to azones, maternal smoking during pregnancy and pre, uh, premature birth and low uh, birth weight, okay, and low birth weight may also contribute to the development of what? Um, ADHD. ADHD. So that is, I've given you the, um, the genetic factors and then the also environmental factors. So number 17, what is, what is what? Aphasia. So aphasia is what communication disorder that impairs person's inability to understand or produce language. So when they ask you, this is what you should say. Aphasia is what a communication disorder that impairs a person's inability to produce language. Okay, it typically results from damage to the brain. Typically results from damage to the brain, often caused by smoke, uh, traumatic brain injury, or uh, neurological neurological conditions such as what a Hamel's disease depending on the location and the extent of the brain damage aphasia can affect various language skills including speaking understanding reading and writing there are different types of aphasia ranging from what the repressive aphasia which is difficult difficulty in producing speech and to what to receptive for aphasia, which is difficulty in understanding language, as well as missed global aphasia, which affect both comprehension and depression. So, uh, let's look at this one. It says what? 
Select and describe one common symptoms associated with autism spect uh, spectrum disorder. So we are going to select and describe one of the uh, symptoms associated with what? autism spectrum disorder. So um, we are going to use what? Repetitive behavior. Repetitive behavior. So repetitive behavior, which results in what? Difficulty with social communication and interaction. And we also have what? Sensory... Um, uh, sensory um, sensitivities okay so these are out uh, so either you you mention what repetitive behaviors or you mention what uh, difficulty with social communication and interaction or sensory sensitivity one of them you write one of them which of the uh, what is the uh, inhibitory neurotransmitter inhibitory neurotransmitter and in uh, so when you talk of in a, uh, inhibitory neurotransmitter, it's a type of neurotransmitter that decreases the likelihood of a new uh, of a neuron firing an action potential, thereby reducing potential activity. Example of inhibitory neurotransmitters include what gamma amino um, aminobutyric acid, okay, which is what GABA, and then what glycine. So these neurotransmitters exert the effect of um, uh, hypolarizing what the uh, postsynaptic membrane or making it more negative. Let's look at the question twenty. So describe one cause of intellectual dif the, uh, intellectual what deficit disorder. One cause of what intellectual deficit disorder. So one cause of intellectual intellectual deficit disorder is Down syndrome. That is what Down syndrome, which is characterized by what chromosoma tri uh, tri uh, trisomy trisomy right, resulting resulting in an extra copy of what chromosome which is what 21 chromosome and then uh, uh, okay so the genetic condition to lead intellectual disabilities developmental delays and also what, and distinctive physical features so let's look at question the last one so the answer the whole thing that they're giving to you it is what it is 40 question uh, it is the first option, which is what the multiple choice is 40 uh, over 40. The second one, which this what the one we just finished is over 40. The, the essay is just 20. So you must pay attention to the feelings. You must read and understand and make sure you pay attention to the feelings well. Pay attention to also the, uh, the multiple choice. Okay? The essay will only give you 20 marks. So this is what you should do. So let's look at it. So it says that, the question says that, choose one of the following uh, chisro, uh, uh, what schizophrenia? Ch choose one of the following: schizophrenia, major uh, depression disorder, attention deficit, hyperactivity, hyperactivity disorder, autism spectrum disorder. Describe the symptoms that are associated with the disorder, the brain area, and and what neurotransmitters involved in the manifestation of the disorder and then for number two it says what describe the processes involved in what the transmission of information or impulses along with the as the axons across what the snap the synapse in the nervous system you should you should what include your answer you should include your answer the initiation and termination processes so this is how we are going about so i'm teaching you how you solve it and then i think i've written something small so you you, you go through it so first of all you must choose a disorder so which of the disorder are you choosing so you must select one of the given disorder which is what schizophrenia major de uh, depressive disorder attention deficit uh, hyperactivity disorder which is what adhd and all we have what Autism spectrum disorder, which is what ASD. So research the synop uh, the symptoms associated with what the disorder you've chosen. So after you've chosen this disorder, you must what, research the symptoms and provide a brief overview of the symptoms, including the characteristics and the behavior behaviors or experience. So after you've chosen, if you are going with what 
uh, assuming you are going with um, um, or how do you call it the um, the autism autism spectrum disorder then you must what you must make sure you research about the symptoms and then the the disorder associated with it okay and then the second one is what you must identify the brain areas uh, the brain areas implicated in the uh, manifestation of the disorder so you describe how the dysfunction of these brain regions contribute to what the symptoms um, observe and also you must investigate and implement what neurotransmitters in that disorder it discuss the abnormalities the uh, this the, the deregulation of neurotransmitters associated with what the disorder and their impact on the brain function. So the second point is that you must describe the neural transmission. So let's say like I'm going with what neural transmission. So I have to what, explain explain the process involved in transmitting information along the axons. Okay, um, this includes what the depolarization, action potential generation. The, uh, the, pre the propagation of what the action potentials along the ozone and then the rep repolarization, okay? Repolarization, uh, okay? And you must describe, you must describe the processes of what? Neurotransmitters release, okay, the, new, the process of what neurotransmitter release and then what? The transmission across the synapse, the, the, the synapses, okay? And also, this involves what the neurotransmitter uh, synapses, storage released from the synaptic neuron, diffusion across the synaptic cleft, and then the binding toward the receptors on postsynaptic neuron. So this is it. So let's look at the essay structure. So the essay structure will be your introduction. You introduce, you must what introduce the disorder and its significance, and you must provide an overview of the essay, and that is what you should do. And then the description of the order too, this is how you go. You describe the symptoms associated with the disorder, describe the brain, the brain areas involved in the disorder, and the rule in the synapsic, uh, uh, in the rule in the, uh, the what, the symptoms manifestation, and you must what, explain the involvement of, of the what, the neurotransmitters, and then the deregulation in the disorder. And also, uh, you must what the the next process is what the neural transmission process. So you must explain the transmission of the information along the axon. Describe what the neurotransmitter release and also what the transmission across what the synapse. And then in conclusion, you summarize your point and, uh, about the chosen disorder and then the processes. And that is it. So let's look at it. So. If you have to go with it, this is how I root mine. So, uh, mental disorders such as what? Schizophrenia, major, dis, uh, dis, uh, major depressive disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, autism spectrum disorder, affect millions of individuals worldwide, impacting their daily functioning and quality of life. In the essay, we will implore the symptoms of what symptoms associated with these disorders, as well as the brain areas of what neurotransmitters involved in its manif uh, manif uh, manifestation. Additionally, we will delve into the processes involved in transmit transmission of information along the axon and across the synapse of what in the nervous system. So first, so. And the second one is what understanding the schizophrenia. So schizophrenia is a complex. So after I've, I've, I've already given you the introduction, I'm coming to write about the schizophrenia. So let's move on. So schizophrenia is a complex mental disorder characterized by a range, by, by a range of what symptoms, including uh, uh, hallucinations, uh, delusions, uh, the organized thinking, and uh, social withdrawal. Dysfunction in dysfunction in severe severe brain area, including the prefrontal cortex, uh, hippocampus, and structum. It has implicated in the disorder. Additionally, abnormalities in the neurotransmitter system, particularly the dopamine and the 
glutamate okay play a significant role in the pato uh, patho uh, what well, the the pato word physiology the pato uh, physiology of what the schizophrenia so now we look at what then uh, the neural transmission process so this is what we are coming to do so the the transmission of the information along the axons involve uh, several key, uh, key processes okay depolarization occurs when neurons when neurons membrane um, potential becomes less negative leading to the generation of an of an action potential the action potential then uh, propagate along the axon facilitated by the opening voltage gated ion channels following the depolarization repolarizations resource what the neurons memory neurons memory potential and it what resting stage so neuron transmitter re, new, uh, neurotransmitters release the trans uh, the transmission across the synapse and are essential for communication between neurons neurotransmitters such as what dopamine uh, serotonin and what and and glutam glutamate are what synop uh, are what are synthesized and stored in uh, vis uh, vesicles within the uh, the the, uh, the what the presynaptic neuron upon the depolarization this v um this vesicle fuse with what with the uh, the presynaptic memory releasing neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft neurotransmitters are then behind the receptors and on the the postsynaptic neuron leading toward the postsynaptic effect in the signal transmission so the conclusion in conclusion understanding the mental disorder of the schizophrenia requires knowledge of uh, knowledge of the uh, symptoms is, symptoms right and uh, underlining neural mechanisms and neural transmitters uh, deregulation. Similarly, uh, comprehending the process involving neural transmission is crucial and elucidating how information is communicated within the nervous system. By studying this topic, researchers aim to develop more effective treatment and interventions for individuals affected by mental disorders um ultimately improving their quality of life and well-being so i'll be bringing you part two but i'm not promising because today the the the, the whole thing i've taken the whole day from me so please i'm not promising you that i'll be releasing the part two but if i have time and and god willing there's there's life and i i don't have anything doing i may bring you the part two but it may not be tomorrow okay thank you god bless you for your time